وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور السلام عليكم As you can see, Sheikh, uh, there's two new people here today uh, There's Amr, uh, who's a friend of uh, my good friend Sami Asim And there's Muhammad, who's also a good friend of my friend Sami <laughs> And I just met them uh, about a week ago. And, and a friend they're... of my friend is my friend. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, an enemy of my enemy <laughs> is my friend. <laughs> so so they, they know uh, that we're, we've been doing these little sessions on, on marriage. And, and Muhammad has signed the contract, but uh, that, that's it. That's as far as he's gone. Yeah. And Amr is uh, married with a, with a child, correct? MashaAllah. Yeah. Well, Muhammad, we wish you the best, inshaAllah. InshaAllah, in a couple of months, inshaAllah. Inshaallah. We've been talking actually about marriage and about you know, the rights of both uh, the husband and the wife and so on. And I really wanted to talk about you know, uh, the real happiness. A uh, lot of people uh, expect marriage life is always happy. No, no downs, all those ups, <laughs> which is not true. The eternal and the absolute happiness can be only found in one place, in paradise, not on earth. Yeah, that's true. Problems occurred uh, during the life of the Prophet ﷺ with his wives at his house. So it's very possible to happen amongst ourselves. It's completely possible. Exactly. <laughs> so a person should keep in mind that you know, problems would happen and have to be prepared as how to handle them. You know, Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, one of the great tabi'een, had a very uh, righteous daughter, mashallah. Once she had finished the entire Qur'an, and she came to, to inquire about an ayah fi surah al-Baqarah. The ayah says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina azab al-nar. Which reads in English as the meaning of this ayah, our Lord grant us a goodly reward in this life and a goodly reward in the hereafter and protect us from the fire of hell. Amen. Allahumma <laughs> amen. As a matter of fact, this is one of the best applications ever. Yeah. So uh, she said, Father, I perfectly understand what is the goodly reward of the hereafter, which is paradise. Yeah. But uh, what about the goodly reward of this dunya? Uh, exactly. Yeah. People yeah. vary. Some people think that uh, the goodly reward is to have a luxurious life, to have a house, to have, you know. So Sa'id ibn Musayyib, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the goodly reward of this life is the good wife, is to have a righteous one. Yeah. The Prophet sallam, said, yeah. Ismail, may Allah have mercy on a man who wakes up at night to pray to rakas. Then he awakens his wife. And if she's so sleepy, he will sprinkle some water on her face to get up and join him. And may Allah have mercy on a woman who gets up at night to pray. And she awakens her husband. And if she's so sleepy, she will sprinkle some water on his face so that they will get up and pray together. How beautiful is it to share those so this beautiful, is, this blessed moments? The opposite moment. is my case. My wife <laughs> throws some water in my face to wake me up. <laughs> Five more minutes and then she comes and she hits me up. Keep in mind that, you know, uh, especially the man when you come back from work and you're extremely tired and so on, that uh, as the Prophet ﷺ has said, so, that so. Uh, Satan ties three knots on the back of each one of us, mm -hmm. saying that, yeah, you have a long night, go back to sleep. So when you get up and you say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana, praise be to Allah who revived us from death. Uh, and unto him is the resurrection. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you remember him. Uh, one of the knots will be undone. Then when you go and make wudu, the second one. And the third one, when you offer the prayer, then you will be fresh and active. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that if a man and his wife get up at night and offer two rak'as, only two rak'as as minimum, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that they will be written that night amongst those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. Amongst الذاكرين الله كثيرا 
with the Akirat. Oh Allah, make us amongst them. Amen. Amen. So those beautiful moments when you share with your life mate, how excellent. What could be better than that? In my opinion, that is the real happiness. Mm. Happiness is... is <laughs> You'll find out. Uh, <laughs> sure. Happiness with your wife is something that, that kind of comes and goes sometimes. I mean, it depends on, like, I mean, sometimes there's not enough bread. <laughs> sometimes there's not enough of this. And there's issues that come along. But if you can achieve that kind of happiness yeah. where it's a religious happiness, then, then we all should be cool with our wives. You know, to, to achieve what you're talking about, you, Ismail, and you and your spouse have the same kind of understanding, uh, you have to inquire an adequate religious knowledge. Sayyidah Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, admired the women of Al-Ansar saying, Rahim Allahu Nisa Al-Ansar. May Allah have mercy on the women of Al-Ansar, the supporters who received immigrants from Mecca to al Medina. Why? What did they used to do? Very special. She said that their shyness did not stop them nor prevent them from seeking their religious knowledge. They would come to the Prophet Sallallahu and inquire about very, very touchy things, but they wanted to know. Uh, by acquiring this, that would give you enough ammunition to live a happy life in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. I think nowadays uh, you might you know, agree with me or not, Omar, uh, Amr, but there's a lot of people who are too shy to, uh, to ask about these kind of things to make sure they can have a happy marriage. You know, but they were asked to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The so things so. that were brought to him, if you said it now in front of people, people would be very shy. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, I can't believe you asked that. Why on earth did you ask me this? No. But they were asked to the Prophet, so it's a good thing for us to, to make sure that we ask these kind of things. And Remember, Ismail, the very first time we met, when we started talking about marriage, we said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam proposed for us the best choice. When he said that, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ so, choose the one who's righteous, who have religious commitment, or otherwise you would lose, mm -hmm. you know. That really helps, because she's the one who lasts. A lot of people who get married because of beauty, because of wealth, because of uh, lineage, or whatever, with the first incident, with the first conflict, with the first, uh, you know, <laughs> adversity, uh, they break away from each other. <laughs> and she leaves him. Why? Because she married him because he was rich. Or, or he, he had handsome. a very high position, or handsome, or whatever. You know, yeah. Sayyida Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. With her. Uh, once the Nabi Sallallahu received oh, the first revelation, and he came shivering and said, Zambiluni, Zambiluni, cover me, cover me. And he was very, very scared. Because he had seen an angel, something which he had never seen before, nor even dreamt of. So, as Sayyida Khadija, during this very, very, uh, difficult time, she tried to calm him down and comfort him, saying, By Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Why are you worried? By Allah, you are the one who uh, upholds the ties of kinship. You are the one who helps the poor and bear the burdens of others. You are the one who honors his guest. So Allah would never disgrace you, standing next to her husband to support him and give him uh, assurance. This is the kind of wife which every one of us needs. I mean, I heard a, a cool story the other day from a friend of mine. He was telling me about, he was in, I'm not going to name the name of the country, but he was in a country and he saw a soldier who had lost both of his legs. And he said, uh, so how in the, how's it going with you? How are things going? He said, well, everything's fine, but my wife left me when I came back. She said, you're not a man anymore because you don't have this part of your body. So he remembered when he was a kid growing up in another country that was actually invaded by this country, that one of the, the fighters went and he lost both of his legs. And when he came back, he got to marry the most beautiful woman in the village who took care of him uh, because there was a difference in what they were fighting for and what the, what the, what the differences in culture yeah. were. Yeah. He wanted, they needed a wife that could take care of him and could be a righteous wife for him. Where in the other part of the world, they didn't care about this. He was no longer, his wife married him because of, of his looks and his strength. Yeah. And when he lost his looks and his strength, she wanted nothing to do with yeah. him. And we were talking about the importance of uh, searching for a righteous woman. What about the other qualities? Beauty, lineage, and uh, I can overlook them? Or, or I remember saying that, well, if you can get all of that, you're the luckiest <laughs> person. Yeah, you got the but, you know, chance. unfortunately, <laughs> no one is perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, none of us is perfect. So do not expect to find one who has everything, or otherwise you will keep waiting until, inshallah, you get married for not for all To be married when you're 70, 80 years old. You have to accept the fact that uh, everyone, every human being is born with some shortcomings. So Except for me. <laughs> Allah, <laughs> for shortcomings. Yeah, so I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
the thing that that I think is cool about the way Islam marriages happen, Islamic marriages happen, is that you don't you don't know each other. Like when I met my wife, I met her and I was married to her a week later, which I always thought was kind of cool. I wasn't this long like romantic thing, you know. It was like now you have to live together. Now you have to find out who this person really is. Because all this, you know, in, a, in, a, in, in the West, we have dating and we have, you know, you maybe live with them for five, six, seven, ten years <laughs> before you marry them. But in Islam, you just, you just get married. And all of a sudden, you're thrown in to live with somebody. So now you have a whole new way of how is this happiness going to happen? Do I know this person? I don't know this person. So you have to find yeah. what true happiness is, which is only in the deen. Only to find it through, through the religion of Allah. Actually, allow me, Ismail. Uh, I know that's your house, but I would like to uh, uh, make a case here. Muhammad uh, Am, how long have you been married? Since 16 months. Oh, MashaAllah, so you're fairly new. <laughs> uh, whenever you have problems at work or in the street where you cannot do anything and you're full of anger, then uh, how do you feel? What are you looking for? And I'm expecting uh, to have, um, you may say, it, the peace of mind at home. What is the thing that relieves your anger? And removes your burden. Is it yelling at somebody, kicking somebody in the shin, stepping yes, on a puppy? Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what about going home and sharing your problem with your wife? Uh, yes, having yes, a good indeed. listener to your problem. Yes. And maybe suggesting to you uh, a solution. Or this giving you so a good advice happens. of being patient. Yes. Or reminding you to ask Allah for forgiveness. Even or Muhammad or used means. to ask his wife for advice. Like the case of Umm Salam. So some, some say that... Uh, you're not allowed, you're, you can't go home with your problems. You, once you get in, in your home, you have to, yeah, to, to remove your, your problems. Yeah. In fact, this is not really true. Mm. The fact is that, that one is waiting for the moment that he would come home and unload and drop his loads of worries and frustrations, share with his best advisor. Mm. You know, the Prophet ﷺ has oh, said that the, the example of this ummah, the ummah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, this nation is like one single unit, one single body. Whenever any organ or a part of this body uh, um, aims or complains, feels a pain, the entire body is aching with pain. What about a man and his wife, mm. a wife and her husband, sharing and feeling the same? Sayyida Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she was sharing with Urwa ibn Zubair ibn al-Awwam uh, an amazing story. She said that, that a month would pass by. And another month would pass by. And none of the uh, houses of the Prophet ﷺ would kindle fire. And this is you know, a figure of speech <laughs> metaphor yeah. indicating that, that they would not even cook for two consecutive months. No cooked food whatsoever. But they were happy. Why? Because they were living with the Prophet ﷺ. Having a wife who's ready to uh, go through adversities and hardships and support her husband, Man, that is the best thing you can get in this life. And believe me, your wife's going to come at you about her bad day. <laughs> and she's going to want you to listen to what she has to say. Yes, but let me ask a question here, please. Um, we spoke about um, the righteous women, the righteous girl. How can I define, or how can I know, how can I define this righteousness? Well, I would be very happy to discuss this with you and answer your question, but Ismail is very meticulous about time. So I think uh, he's giving us a break right now. Mm. Okay. I guess I will. I have to go make wudu anyway, inshallah. inshallah. So I'll go do that, and you guys can, can talk about this when I come back. Inshallah. inshallah. Prophet ﷺ have informed us that we should not obey no one on the account of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the superiority is to Allah's command. So the husband tells his wife that I want you to check hands with my colleagues, with my business partners. No, even if it leads to divorce. If the husband says to his wife that you have to party with me, with partners and so on. No, you have to take your hijab off. No, by any means communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your language and he will be very happy to answer your dua. Okay, I'm back. You can answer his question. I know. I owe Amra an answer for his question. Okay. Uh, 
even though we have talked about that before, Yam, but um, I think it is very, very important to reiterate that. You know, once Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, came to visit uh, his son Ismail, Prophet Abraham was in uh, Jerusalem, and uh, he, of course, you know that he left his son in, in Mecca when it was just a desert. Yes. So when he came to visit him, Ismail, mashallah, had grown up and he was already married, but he missed him. He wasn't there. So he noticed that Ismail uh, had been married. So he talked to his wife about their life and uh, how does she feel about it. She said miserably. She said, uh, how do you feel about it? She said, we're experiencing poverty, adversity, and hardship. Everything is terrible. He said, well, if this is the case, then when Ismail comes back, give him my greeting and tell him that Ibrahim says, change Atabat Ababik. Change your doorstep. Change your doorstep. Yes. So she didn't understand, obviously, and she was an ungrateful wife. When Ismail came from his hunting journey, uh, Ibrahim had left, and he sensed uh, the fragrance of his father. He said, was there anybody here? She said, Naam, yes, an old man. And he said, uh, what did he tell you? She said, she, he kept asking me about our life and how do I feel about it. And of course, I told him that you are having a miserable life. It's very dry, we're experiencing poverty and so on. He said, so what did he tell you? He said, he, uh, he mentioned something which I didn't understand. He said, change your doorstep. He said, well, the man who's here is my father. And his advice to me is to divorce you because you are an ungrateful woman. Then later on, Ibrahim السلام, came to visit once again. And once again, he missed Ismail. He was in home. Ismail had divorced his old wife and he got married to a newer one. Uh, Ibrahim had the same chat with the new wife and said, how's your life? She said, it's best. We couldn't thank Allah uh, enough. We're having everything. We're experiencing luxury and, and etc. So Ibrahim السلام, was very happy. And uh, he gave Ismail السلام, and he said, convey this message to him. Tell him that to uh, keep firm your doorstep. As Ismail came back, he noticed that the same fragrance was here, and he asked his wife, she said that he came and he said such and such. He said, that was my father, and he said, keep your wife. She's a good, righteous wife. Well, we're not waiting to get married first and figure out whether she's righteous or not. <laughs> having a girl who's born and raised in a righteous family, having righteous parents, pious ones, a girl who's religiously committed, she's wearing a proper hijab, uh, she behaves outside as inside. Uh, hearing references from here and there is very, very important. Uh, the opposite of what most or many of the youth think that if she looks pretty, uh, that's it. This that's is all what I want. Yeah. If her father is a manager or a president of this job or that business, that's it. So when you focus on any of the worldly things, this is what you get. But when you focus on uh, what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, recommended oh, for you <coughs> most, which is righteousness and piety, you get everything. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the subject because that's the kind of fool I am. I just roll <laughs> in. I just I do what I want because it's my house and I do what I want. But uh, since we're talking about the righteous wife and getting married and everything, now most men have desires. They have you yeah, know sure. things they want <laughs> to do with women. Now what is the? There's only one way to satisfy these desires, and that's through a prop a proper marriage. Is this uh, the correct thing? Absolutely. This is actually one of the most important goals of getting married. You know, the Prophet وسلم, uh, addressed the youth who are at the marriageable age saying that, Ya Ma'ashar al-Shabaab, oh young men, whoever amongst you is capable to get married, let him get married. And if not, if he can't, then the Prophet وسلم, prescribed fasting. Why fasting? Because it's a shield, it protects him against those thoughts which crosses anybody's mind, especially at, uh, you know, uh, at this age, when you desire to have a relationship with a woman, and you can't. So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prescribed fasting. So, in some cases, uh, uh, when you're fasting, your sexual desire increases. Yeah. Some, some claim that. No, that's not true. The opposite is true. Why? Because the desires are as follows. There is, you know, the stomach desire, the desire of eating and drinking. Then there is a sexual desire, then the desire of accumulating and piling up wealth. Uh, 
the priority or the precedence is for the you food, eat and, drink. eat and drink. That's what keeps you alive. If a person, if a person is hungry and is starving, uh, doesn't have time to think about uh, <laughs> He's for having a, a relationship <laughs> or husband-wife relationship because yeah. he first needs to satisfy this desire. Once he eats so by breaking this food. desire and keeping yourself busy, of course, when you're fasting, you're closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you focus on pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that diverts your attention from that. Is this okay. the same? Should the women Absolutely. also fast? Enough? Absolutely. A uh, lot of people assume that's only related to men because only men have that desire. That's not true. Women too have the same desire. Yes. So the Prophet ﷺ has stated in one hadith that uh, when a woman goes out, a shaitan beautifies her to tempt others. So he, the Prophet ﷺ has said that if you ever see a woman who tempts you outside, then go home and fulfill this desire and suppress it by having a relationship with your lawful wife because that is the only thing which would really suppress your desire. So keeping this in mind, when a person goes home and he wants to satisfy his desire in a lawful manner, and his wife, without a just reason, says no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> big problem there. You know, the Prophet was uh, a great threat to a wife who would reject her. Right? You know, the Prophet said, if a husband invites or calls his wife to bed, to have a relationship with her. And for no just reason she says no, out of arrogance or, or she's not tired, she's not sick. She just doesn't want to, uh, you know, comply with his request. The entire night the angels will be cursing her. Because this is one of the most important goals of getting married, to satisfy this desire in a, a lawful oh, manner. The Prophet wasallam, once he was talking about the charitable acts, the good righteous deeds. He counted one of them is And once you have a relationship with your wife, a husband-wife relationship, an intimate relationship, that's an act which provides you with a reward. You get rewarded for it. That's a charity. So the companions did like, uh, I'm right now. <laughs> what? You know? Um, this is cultural, by the way, that we avoid talking about things no, like that's no. like it's haram. Yeah, While the, the West, Prophet yeah. addressed it in public. <laughs> no. Yes, not in the West, it's totally uh, the opposite. <laughs> this is tame. So, uh, the companions were astonished. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, would one of us have a sexual relationship and he would be rewarded for that? The Prophet وسلم, proved his case and his statement saying that, what do you think if this person fulfills his desire in an illegal manner, yes. not adultery, yes. with a wife who's not lawful for him, with, with a lady or a woman who's not his wife. People start looking for rocks. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you're very violent. I even heard that if you put a piece of food in your, on your, in the mouth, in the mouth of your wife, it is an act of charity as well. Uh, what about uh, a bite instead of a piece of wood? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you feed, when you feed when your you wife. When you feed, when you close your wife, when you spend your anything, house, mm -hmm. the best marriage. spending you spend is the, the, the dirham, or the dollar, the money which you spend on your household mm -hmm. and in your family members. So I said, what do you think if he does it in haram? Will uh, he deserve to be punished? Yeah, he said, right. definitely. He said, similarly, if he avoids the haram and fulfills his desire in a legitimate and a halal mm -hmm. manner, Deserves he should be rewarded. be rewarded for that. But what about the opposite case? What if the wife asks her husband to fulfill her desires and he, he may be no tired, he may be yeah. sick, he may refuse. This is very smart, especially coming from a man, this is very, very important. Be a caring uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, a man should understand that they both have rights and they both have desires. So when, uh, uh, you know, a man should not really wait for his wife to ask for it. Because coming from a, a lady is kind of very difficult, especially, you know, uh, the Eastern culture. Mm -hmm. So a man should understand his responsibilities and duties towards his wife as well. Not only when he feels that... Uh, that he needs to, no. but maybe he feels... And I, I'm sure we'll come to the point where we cover this all in details, inshallah. Mm -hmm. inshallah. I want to go back to the story you mentioned at the beginning of the segment, uh, the story of Abraham and Ishmael. Uh, what if Allah has given me an ungrateful wife who causes trouble? I'm, I'm instructed to divorce her, or can I bear and I'll get the reward? Why would you divorce her? 
because she caused me a problem and uh, is ungrateful. No, this story, number one, it happened with the, uh, Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam. Two prophets of having, Allah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, having the advice coming from one of the greatest prophets mm -hmm. to another great prophet is different than having an advice from me to you. <laughs> and uh, if you really make the right choice beforehand, you will not have to end up uh, filing for a divorce. Now, this story, though, I have a friend who's looking for a second wife. So I told him, I said, man, you got to go. And the first thing you have to do is find someone who's going to be grateful for, to you. You know, go to the, the village and find someone who has nothing. So whatever you give her, she's happy with. Mm -hmm. yes. Because you assure yourself to have a grateful wife who's always going to be uh, very happy with anything you provide for her. If you marry a very rich woman, then it's hard to make her grateful because she has everything. That's but if you marry a woman who's maybe a little poorer than you, then anything you give her is a great thing. Yes. Yeah. And she's always grateful to her husband, yeah. which is a pretty good thing. So, just a quick reminder, uh, uh, if any of you, if any of us is looking for ultimate happiness, uh, that really does not exist on earth, <laughs> you know. <laughs> ultimate happiness is uh, promised to have it, inshallah, in paradise. And the way to have this ultimate happiness is by finding a good assistance who would assist you to be a righteous man, to stay and remain steadfast mm. on the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the footsteps of the Prophet <laughs> And trust me, that's extremely difficult to achieve without having the other have righteous as well. Mm. So, uh, hasanatul dunya, the goodly reward of this life is? Yeah. Righteous wife. The good Matches. wife. I would say my wife would definitely lead you to the good <laughs> word of the hereafter, which is paradise. paradise. <laughs> and that's why there is a beautiful dua. Rabbana, have lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun. Wa ja'alna lil muttaqeena imam. Our Lord, grant us from our spouses and our offspring a comfort of our eyes, a peace of mind. And make us the leaders from the righteous ones. Allahumma amin. But, but what about the verse that says, Inna min azwajikum wa awladikum adum wa lakum. Indeed, some of your wives and, son and children are enemy for you. Muhammad, you're kind of late in your question. <laughs> yeah, I think I have to go and yeah, perhaps, time inshallah, time. next time we'll next be happy to answer this. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Barakallahu fikum and I will see you next time, inshallah. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa antu. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu lak. Assalamu alaikum.